today I'm going to show you how easy it is to create your first iOS app using the Roo SDK. So first things first, you're going to sign into the Roo portal. And as you can see, I have several projects here, but for this tutorial, let's create a new project. So you're going to give your project a name. And this is just any name that you would want to use to refer to your app. It doesn't necessarily matter exactly what the name is. The bundle ID on the other hand, this is important um, because it needs to exactly match the bundle ID of your iOS app. Otherwise, your application will not work. Um, but for this sample project, we can just use any bundle ID and it will work. Um, so let's do that. But definitely make sure when you're creating your own project that you're using the exact bundle ID of your project. And for the type, we can do direct to consumer or enterprise. We'll just do direct to consumer for this and create project. So what this is going to do is generate a license key for you. It's also going to email it to you, but since we're here, we'll just go ahead and download it. And if you look inside this license.txt, we have a simple JSON file. Um, but what's most important is this signature. And that's what allows your license to be validated and allows your application to work with the Roo SDK. If you change anything inside this file, the signature will not work. So you can't go in and change the expiration. You can't change your email. You can't change anything. And in this instance, this is an invalid license since we're just doing this for a test and it says invalid, but yours should have a number here instead of invalid. So since this license has been invalidated, it's okay to be sharing our signature, but with your file, make sure you keep it secure and you're not sharing it publicly anywhere. All right, and the next thing we're going to need is the SDK itself. So we're gonna click this big download SDK button. There it is. And you may, you may see the name ScandyCore thrown around. Um, that is synonymous with Roo. So anytime you see ScandyCore, just don't get too confused. It's just Roo. All right, so we have these nice projects that we've set up for you that are a good starting place for playing around with the Roo SDK. So we're gonna be doing, for this example, the iOS project. So let's open that up. And then we have this nice GitHub repo and let's clone it down to our computer. Great, and let's open that up and see what we got. So we're gonna get this skinny core iOS example directory. It's very simple. We have our readme, which has all our instructions that we're going to follow. We have our skinny core iOS example these are just all the files that are going to be used in our Scandi Core iOS example Xcode project. And then we have the Scandi Core license directory, which is where we're going to put our Scandi Core uh, slash Roo license. So let's just follow the README step by step. So first and foremost is the Roo license. So we already downloaded that. And First, we need to rename the license to scandycore license.txt and we're going to move it into this scandycore license directory. So, renamed scandycore license.txt and move it in here. And you'll see here it is. And if you open the README, it'll say put scandycore license.txt in here. So, that's what we did. Now, we're going to open up our Xcode project in Xcode. And as the README says, we're going to select the Scandi Core iOS example target and add Scandi Core license.txt to build phases, copy bundle resources. So we're going to click up here on Scandi Core iOS example. And we're going to click this target, Scandi Core iOS example, head over to build phases and copy bundle resources and in this scenario, it's already here, but I'll just remove it and re-add it just in case it's not there for you. Right there. 
And just to make sure everything got linked properly, we're going to click Scandi Core License.txt, and you should see that license file in there. All right, and then the next step is we need to put our framework into our iOS project. So this is set up to be very simple. So we have our Scandi Core SDK that we downloaded from the portal. We're going to just unzip that. And when you do that, you're going to find a Scandi Core dot framework. And you're going to go into this Scandi Core iOS example directory, open that up. You're going to go into frameworks and you're just going to move that into frameworks. And if you open the readme, sure enough, it'll say put scandicore.framework in here. So there it is. And from there, you should be all set. These sample projects are configured and set up ahead of time, so it's simple enough to just put in the license and put in the framework. There's a little bit more legwork you'll have to do in your own application, but we can go over that in the next tutorial. So make sure that you are connected to an actual device. I have an iPhone plugged in here um, as opposed to a simulator. As you'll see in big text, do not build for a simulator. Scandi Core or Roo is only packaged to be run on device. So make sure you have your phone plugged in and you're gonna hit build. Okay, build succeeded. And this should open up a Scandi Core iOS example on your phone. And when you open it up, you'll see it's a very basic app where you can start scanning, you can stop scanning, you can save your mesh, and basically do this, the basic uh, Roo functionality. And if you're curious about the license that we used, or the functions in general that are being used in here, Go ahead and visit the viewcontroller.mm and you can see our set license function function here. We this is something that you're going to have to use in your own project, so definitely take note of it. Uh, basically, what we're doing is we're grabbing our Scandi Core license text, turning it into a string, converting it to a C string, and then we're passing that along to set license, which is a function that comes from Scandi Core Manager. And if you want to look around, you can see some of the other functions like how we are loading a scan view, how we're setting up scan configuration, how we are starting the scan, stopping the scan, and all of that good stuff. So hopefully this was a nice and simple tutorial and a good way to get started playing around with the Roo SDK. And our next tutorial will go over how to use the Roo SDK in your own project and hope to see you then. Bye.